Um, first, I'd like to um, hand around this um, jar and scissors, and I want to create um, an artwork now. Uh, you need to cut off a little bit of your hair, um, put it in, and pass it around. Um, it's, it, it's kind of a tax. See it as a tax, because um, it's unpaid, and uh, I'm freelance. So um, I want to create a collective itching powder. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but um, I might, like, I can't promise I won't clone you at a later date to have as my own personal fan club. Um, so today um, I'm going to talk to you about an art residency that I did in the Stratford Centre, which I don't know if any of you know it, but it's a shopping centre. Uh, oh, where's the, where are the buttons? Yeah. On there. Oh. So it is that centre. Uh, it's opposite Westfield in the Olympic Park, and I did an unauthorised art residency there uh, last summer. So I was very lucky to do that. Um, so I'm going to tell you about that, but first I want to introduce my work so you get a sense of who I am. So I like to intervene in capitalism in quite direct, personal, small ways as a way of trying to transform it and maybe reinvigorate it because I feel like it's got quite advanced and that I preferred it when there was like more competition because that's sort of what capitalism is about, isn't it? Competition, but um, the monopoly effect has, has sort of decreased that that freedom that maybe it once gave us and um, I hung around a lot of shopping centers when I was a teenager in West Yorkshire and uh, I'm quite fond of the, the concrete ones the ones where spontaneous anarchic things happen where antisocial behavior is encouraged um, <laughs> so this is a piece of work that I do um, quite regularly I've been doing it for like 10 years and um, I go to a, a market, like often it's Ridley Road Market in Dalston, and I go to like an African food stall or an Asian food stall, and I buy the most unfamiliar vegetable that I can find. And then, um, I don't know what this one is, but that's one of them. And then I smuggle it into a Tesco's or an Asda or Morrison's um, with the rest of my shopping just as a kind of alibi. And then I attempt to buy it with the rest of my shopping. Um, so it like throws the whole system into chaos uh, because the cashier can't categorise it. They don't know what it is. Sometimes they do, but because it's not in the system, they have to ask um, like a supervisor or a manager. And um, I've been lucky enough to meet uh, the manager of the Oxford Marks and Spencers. At, if that gets right to the top, if you do it in there, I'd encourage you all to start doing it because it's difficult to try to overthrow capitalism on my own. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to, I'm just questioning. I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't really promise any other alternative that would be better. Uh, I did have this idea called aristocratic Marxism, which would be um, like you divide yourselves into two and then um, like half of you work as peasant farmers for half the week um, and half of you are aristocrats and then you swap for the second half of the week. Um, so just ways of creating equality that are maybe a bit more about compartmentalized rather than kind of sharing the wealth in a literal way you might imagine. This is another piece that I've been doing um, for about a year. Um, I often walk through Mayfair and um, I'm very conscious of who owns the land beneath our feet, who owns London. And um, the Duke of Westminster, that's uh, Gerald Cavendish Grosner, he lives in a big mansion in Chester in the north and uh, he owns Mayfair. And so what I like to do is collect the surface of Mayfair and then like post it to him at his <laughs> residence. So if people could help me by doing that as well, his address is there. He, um, and because for him it's just an asset on an Excel spreadsheet and he doesn't get to enjoy the sensory pleasure of being in a real place. And I imagine his, his feet aren't really on the ground and so I've literally allowed him to keep his feet on the ground. So who owns the land beneath our feet right now? That would be this guy. Um, he, what, what's his name? Um, oh, um, Barry Sternlicht, and he um, it, he's like the CEO of Starwood Property, and you can see he's very happy because he's learnt 
he's learned these laws of marketing that I've started to become quite interested in. And I thought that if um, I became more knowledgeable about marketing, I would be able to um, have like the, the tools to maybe transform like the system in new ways and and if that failed then i could maybe get like a fairly well-paid job in marketing um so i've been interested in marketing for a while uh i i'm gonna try and adopt one of these smiles I, you can see that barry has quite a, a diverse array of um emotions in these images all of which communicate value and marketing is about communicating value um, so I started to do more research into marketing and you can imagine my delight when the Westfield Centre, not Stratford Centre, the Westfield Centre, the shiny beacon of wealth and regeneration, uh, a curator who was doing a, a kind of pop-up art show there emailed me and asked if I wanted to do a residency in the Westfield Centre, uh, an art residency, as part of his show. And so I thought, this is brilliant because I really need to learn about marketing and I can learn because that's like the place for marketing. Um, but I thought, like, being a little bit more consumer, sort of commercial orientated at that point, I thought I'll ask whether there is a fee for that because it is a multinational corporation and um, and so I, I, I emailed and said, will there be a fee? And the email back and said, um, we'll look into it. So uh, I didn't really hear from them after that. And I realized that we'll look into it is actually marketing speak for no. <laughs> um, and it, I like the way that it evoked this this imagery of a crystal ball that they were literally looking into it, they, they weren't accountable for the decision because it was somehow written in the stars so i was a bit annoyed with westfield anyway because i'm from bradford in west yorkshire and it's like to be honest it's not worth going to see um bradford it's a bit it's it's quite it's struggling because of leeds but um Westfield decided eight years ago that they were going to build um, a Westfield in Bradford, but then they realized that that was a really bad idea because there's no, no one had any money and they, no one would go there. So they pulled out and they left this, which has become affectionately known as the Bradford Hole. Uh, it's, a, it's the foundations of a Westfield. Uh, that didn't happen and they've started to rebuild it again now but i think it's got quite a lot of public funding so that's great because we we've sort of paid for it it's just what bradford needed um the, uh, this is when they rebranded it like the community artists the ultimate gentrifiers um rebranded re it as the bradford urban garden there um as the sort of post-apocalyptic shoots and leaves started to grow from the hole um so uh this is the Stratford Centre. I was so annoyed with the Westfield Centre that I stormed out and I noticed over the road there was the Stratford Centre, the opposite, the kind of David to the Goliath. And it was thriving against all the odds. And I wondered, how could that be? And I thought, well, if I want to learn about marketing, then it's much better to learn about marketing somewhere where it's thriving against all the odds rather than somewhere where it, it actually stocks products that people might want that are already flying off the shelves. So um, that's the Stratford Centre through the ages. That's the most recent one, which has got this kind of scales, um, a, a sculpture to kind of slightly hide it. Um, I think it was part of the Olympic effort. Um, so. What can we learn from the Stratford Centre? I've developed a marketing theory, um, which I may write a book about or something like that, but um, this is just the start of it, to look into the psychology of how you can take the negative things about yourself and really own them and turn them into positive things, which is great for us all, and it's morally uplifting, which is what you want from a TED talk. <laughs> um, the Stratford Centre, I, I started hanging around there doing this self-appointed residency for a whole summer, actually, um, and uh, I just looked at like w what they were doing to help um, their situation. And you can see that the, um, this market store, it's mostly market stores and um, pound shops. This guy here is selling local snails in garlic there. Um, and he's obscured the handwritten sign um, to make it even more difficult to sell them. But they're all <laughs> flying off the shelves. There's always a queue. And um, he only sells eggs in quantities of 30 or more. Um, 
kind of narrowing down his market to just those families that are 15 and more. Um, so, I mean, it's quite arrogant, really, isn't it? Because he's deliberately hindering his own, um, his, his own capacity to sell products because he knows that he can do it so well. Anyway, um, that's a product that's available in the Stratford Centre, and it epitomizes the Stratford Centre's marketing method. Um, so it's quite an English thing to do, to, to be self-deprecating as a way of promoting yourself. So uh, this pack may contain unsmoked slash smoked bacon. It may contain either of those things. It's, it's not very specific. Normally you think of bacon as being that particular shape, but why? Like it's, it, why that preconception? It could be any shape. Um, so that's something I liked. This is available in the Stratford Centre. It's also available in any hole in the barrett, but, um, but it, I noticed it in the Stratford, Stratford Centre because it, it was really in line with what seemed to be happening. I was noticing this trend emerging. Um, it's ordinary vegetable oil, but they'd taken this product that was quite generic and then they've marketed it in a very specific way. Almost too specific, but not too specific for the Stratford Center. So it's marketed at uh, dogs and taekwondo players. That's the website. Um, that's a dog that uh, had arthritis, but it was cured because of dog oil. Um, they also have this dog fat song, which is uh, still sung in folk clubs in the North. Um, and yeah, they sponsor a taekwondo player because you can like rub it into your legs and it makes you more flexible. That's just, they sell loads of these magazines and they have loads of CCTV all around them in the WH Smiths and the Stratford Centre um, as if to sort of fetishise them and make you maybe want to steal them. This, this is a shop called Mystical Head Shop. It's just in the, in the back corner of the, of the Stratford Centre, because the Stratford Centre, of course, is just a glorified zebra crossing. Um, it, if you look on Wikipedia, it says that uh, around 21 million visitors pass through the Stratford Centre every year, but it says pass through because it then acknowledges that most of them use it as a thoroughfare between like, the station and the other bit of Stratford. So it's this zebra crossing adorned with all these pound shops and things. And at the back there's mystical head shop, head shop one word, not sure why but um, it's the Stratford Centre. So um, it sells everything in the world but what it lacks in, in targeting like products, it makes up for in like the, the target audience, the consumer that it's, that it's selected. So if you look at all the products there, they have a price tag which is usually bigger than the product itself. Um, the only two that don't are that Jim Davidson autobiography there and then that sign saying pipe, pipe smokers welcome here. So we can see that their props used to identify the, the target market as being the, the, the Jim Davidson fan that smokes a pipe. <laughs> That's my favourite product that I bought in the Stratford Centre and they're still available in the WH Smiths and they're only 50p. It is a postcard advertising or like promoting or celebrating Newham and it was printed just before the Olympics uh, but yet it makes no mention of the, the then impending Olympics. It just features methods of leaving the borough. <laughs> so, uh, and also the, uh, this memorial to the World Cup but that didn't take place in Newham so I'm not sure why it's on there really. Um, right so you can watch this in your own time but it's uh, if you search on YouTube Stratford Centre After Dark most of you probably know that like it becomes a kind of underground skate park um, and a break dancing <coughs> arena um, after dark and it's because the Stratford Centre encourages sort of youth um, sport and things that and loitering and like teenage things that normally a shopping centre might discourage through the use of something like one of those mosquito um, things you know that emits a high pitched sound that only young people can hear but <laughs> the Stratford Centre um, encourages that and so it becomes this thriving subculture of like experimental dance and, and, and skateboards and stuff. Um, so we've seen some of the things that happen in the Stratford Centre, but could I distill that and um, try to see whether it works in, in other areas so then I, I could, could I apply it? Um, 
I'm going to look first at, at the marketing context of other marketers that have tried to, to use a Stratford Center type method and see whether it has worked for them. And generally, it doesn't. Um, so this is Visit Portsmouth's um, posters. You might have seen them on the tube. Uh, it, they promise quite a lot of like pleasant things, like um, waterfront shopping, amazing beaches, a beautiful south coast. But yet, you'll see from the image that it doesn't depict any of those things. Um, it just uh, shows some like not very like not very glamorous. No offense to them, not very glamorous people. Um, like some like this woman will be really annoyed when she sees us. She's on the tube and she sees herself in that not very flattering pose. And then this kid being told off for messing around on his phone. So it didn't work. This uh, again, it doesn't work. It's in it was in the reduced section of Fortnum and Mason's a cupcake, um, which has a quote saying it's po impossible to love and be wise. Um, basically, a, a, a kind of backhanded compliment. Of, I um, I like you, but it's probably because I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work outside the Stratford Centre. This always comes up in my Facebook. It doesn't work. I don't. I, I'm offended by it. Not in the service center. This uh, is a self-deprecating vegan drink. You didn't maybe want to buy it. Yes, we are vegan. So uh, this book I found, and um, I like it because it acknowledges that that with like some people becoming rich and other people become poor, and so like, but it chooses to depict um, like the good bit rather than the bad bit. But so no one likes this, but it should really be like that. Um, so further afield, how can we um, see whether, like, like beyond even marketing, this this the psychology of subversive marketing um, works? That is along the Thames pathway. Um, it's like a bollard that uh, between a wall and a house. And whilst you really like, I, I wouldn't have wanted to squeeze through it like normally, but because that was there, it really it was quite tempting. <laughs> That's in Hackneywick, and it's a health and safety device that like, sprayed danger on it. But I don't know about you, but it made me want to jump in. That as a, like, it was quite a cartoon uh, feeling, a Tom and Jerry kind of thing. That, um, if anyone wants to see it, it's behind... It's, it's, quite a lot of these are around Harrods, weird, weirdly. It's behind Harrods, and um, Never has a sign made me want to jump over a wall so much as this one to see the exotic species within. That's in the Freud Museum. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to sit on that couch. <laughs> and this is a disguise for. It is. It's in um, Surrey Keys. It's. A disguise for their satellite dish because he didn't want to brag about how big it is, but like clearly it makes it even more obvious. <laughs> this isn't really relevant to this talk, but I just wanted to, to show you that some boys near my house are filling up all their windows with beer cans, <laughs> which is really cool. I'm impressed. Um, so I got some prawns, and then one was really small, but I realized it made the other ones all look bigger, and they made the other one look really cute. Like, that's in Warren Street Station, and like years of drudgery of commuters' feet have created this logo, which is a logo I propose maybe uh, to replace the Stratford Centre uh, logo. Um, it's quite nice. It's the essence of, the, of human drudgery. That's a potato I had the other day, and its imperfection resembled a smiley face, which made me like it more. Um, that was by Harrods. Um, normally the car would have been like it, not very noticeable, but um, <laughs> like <laughs> because they parked it next to that, those uh, rubbish bins, then it made it a lot more noticeable. <laughs> so, like obviously, when like a method like this is proved to be successful, like, it could be used by other um, by other institutions and companies. Um, to, that they could capitalize off this technique. And so the Westfield Center has started to do something similar. This is the Westfield Kardashian crush. They're creating crushes like um, kind of locusts descend when Justin Bieber or the Kardashians arrive. And it's not really about the celebrities. They're using them as a sort of bait to create an unpleasant, possibly dangerous situation possibly trying to use the Stratford Center's um, like love of, of, of the unpleasant to create something positive, although I don't see that it's really working there. And so 
This is the last slide. I just want to thank Andrew Norton, who's the manager of the Stratford Centre, um, for helping me to start. I don't know where it will lead, but um, to help, help helping me to sort of see marketing in a new way. Um, here he's pictured with a local man, um, and he was in the Newham Recorder. It said that. Um, like local man wins a bike to celebrate the uh, Tour de France passing through the borough. But clearly from the expression on the man's face, you can see that actually it was just a local criminal had attempted to steal the bike. And Andrew Norton, being a subversive marketer that he is, ran into Clinton's cards, got that rosette, stuck it on there, took a photo, sent it into the new recorder. So thank you, Andrew Norton. Thank you.